Welcome back to the, the Housing Transformation Summit, our afternoon session. If we haven't met, because I knew a few, a few more people filled this room for lunch. So I am Jennifer Cooper. I am a fractional CMO and marketing consultant for the home building industry. My company is Evolution Marketing, and I am the track chair for the digital solutions today. All right, so this morning we talked about how do we attract buyers into our marketing experiences? Where are they finding and experiencing our brand? This afternoon we're gonna be talking about how we pull them into the funnel and how do we engage with people at specific areas of the funnel and what does the funnel actually look like? So we're gonna get some different ideas on that. But before we get started, we do have Box Brownie here. We have Alana Silva with Box Brownie and she's our, they're our sponsor for today. So she's got a brief presentation to introduce us to her product. So take it from here. Thank you for having me, guys. Um, so like I said, my name is Alana, um, and I'm really excited to be here today to talk to you about our digital solution that we provide at boxbranding.com. So boxbranding.com, for those of you who don't know, um, we are a world leader in property marketing. Um, and what we do is we specialize in the imagery you would need to sell your house, whether it be a new build um, or a used build, um, with a particular focus on the property marketing angle. All our solutions are affordable and as quick as we possibly can get it out to you. Um, and we have 170,000 clients in 116 different countries, so it's no small operation. Our headquarters is based in Australia, um, but we have a team spread across 19 different countries. I'm not gonna touch too much on the different promises we give our customers, other than the one that I think is the most important is the pay-as-you-go option. We don't actually give our customers the options of a subscription because we know that in the housing market you might have one house one month, you may have 15 or 20 the next, ideally. Um, so you just pay for what you use, which we think is really important for our clients. Today, I'm really just gonna touch on four of our main edits and how I think that they can affect um, you, how you guys can use them as a digital solution. So the first, first one is virtual staging. Now, virtual staging is really, really common um, in real estate agents as a, tech uh, as a tactic. Um, but 83% of staged properties sell for the asking price or above. And that's a really, really great stat, and it really um, kind of encompasses both physical and virtual staging. Why virtual staging is so important is there's a few different reasons. One is, ideally, we would absolutely love for these houses to be selling within two days. That would be the best, even like without putting them on the market. But sometimes that's not indicative of the actual market. Maybe it's going to sit there for a few extra days. So virtual staging is a great solution where you pay, in our case, $24, and that you own that for the lifetime that the property sits on the market. So you're not paying day by day for physical staging. And in the cases of new homes, where it's great is that you're not running the risk of wear and tear damage from getting the furniture in and out. The option that I do want to kind of give everyone um, that we kind of touched on earlier is um, also in the situation where you've got multi-use um, rooms. So Tim Costello yesterday was amazing and gave us so many different tactics for how you can market houses differently, but multi-use um, rooms is a massive one. So in this room here, it's a beautiful space, quite like the trees, it'd be a very nice room if that was my bedroom, but it's a space that's a bit interesting and you can tell in the position of the house Maybe you don't want to use it as a bedroom. Maybe you want to use it as a pet room, as we discovered yesterday. That's quite important. Um, maybe you want to use it as a gym. Or maybe you want to use it as a home office. So that's where staging really does thrive, because what it does is it allows you to give that visual of, this is what it could be, even if it's been built in a certain way. <coughs> Floor plan redrawers. This one is. It's definitely my favorite thing that we do because there's so many different reasons why floor plans are vital to a uh, marketing, property marketing. So one in five buyers will overlook a property if it doesn't include a floor plan. So that means 20% of your market, if there isn't a floor plan on the um, listing or when you're pitching it to them, are gonna overlook it. That's a really, really large amount of the market and what we wanna do is maximize every single person that potentially wants to use this house. I have a few more stats here, because we love a good stat. Um, but in Australia, um, floor plans on listings are viewed 7.5 times more frequently than the maps. So what it means are people are clicking on the map, they're having a look at where the location is, but then they're going back to the floor plan time and time again. What does that tell us? That the, the, how the house flows is extremely important to the consumer. Listings with floor plans on average spend 50% less time on market. Same thing, it just really goes to show how important they are. And one in 10 buyers will arrange a viewing without 
without first seeing the um, floor plan. So they're not going to actually even book a viewing to have a look at it if they don't have a floor plan there. And then one that I did steal from Tim yesterday is 73% of new home buyers said a dynamic floor plan would have helped them determine if the house was a good fit. <clears throat> now, why aren't people including floor plans in their list? Um, <laughs> yeah. Now, we, as we touched on yesterday, as you know, the market emerges, we have two key players for people buying houses. One of them is um, an age group that I would be in, and I can guarantee you if someone presented me to this, I'd be very confused, um, and I would have no idea what any of that means quickly, because I really I don't need to know. It's what you guys need to know, it's what the developers and the council approvals need to know, but what the client wants to know is <coughs> where their garage is. They want to know how far away is their bedroom from the bathroom, how far away is the family room from the master bedroom, everything like that. That's what they want to know. A floor plan like this, it's beautifully coloured. You can really quickly tell where the front door is, where the garage is. That is something that's really going to attract your buyers. And it's actually a really great way to get it personalised and branded to you as well. So you can see there we have the Ellie Jane logo at the top. You can get it very branded to, to you guys as well. And something like this is going to cost you $20, $28. So it's a really cost-effective way to digitally showcase something that is quite complicated in a really easy fashion. Virtual renovations is also a really key one, but I think it's sometimes probably overlooked by a few people. So 90% of their buyers start their search for a property online. So we know that catching their attention in the listing is vital. So where virtual renovation shines is it means that you're able to get your property on market quicker if you are maybe had some delays in getting it out there. But something like this, it's a beautiful view. You probably don't want to actually go and commission a render to bring that one to life. When we think of virtual renovations, we probably think of extremely used properties like this. Um, and showing them into something like this, which is amazing. And it's a really great way to overcome that objection of, I don't really know what's going on here. However, when we look at something like this, this is a brand new, this is a brand new house. Uh, so potentially what's happened is that there's been a change or maybe the, it's gonna cost a little bit more and your client really doesn't understand why it's gonna cost them more and they're not understanding the vision of the property. When we do something like this, however, oh God, um, what it does is it allows you to really bring to life the vision and potentially overcome that um, price objection without having to commission a render. Virtual renovations are going to cost, uh, this is about $135, um, and it only takes five to seven days to turn around, whereas renders are often a bit more expensive than that and can take a little bit more time. Now on to renders. Um, renders are great as they're a cost-effective and efficient way of selling new construction. I'm sure all of us have had the time where the renders were not that um, cost-effective. They were quite expensive and the quality wasn't that great. Whereas times are very different, technology available means that they are quite amazing. What renders actually allow you to do, um, and the stat yesterday from um, Tim was amazing, where it said 35% of um, new construct, they wish they started and were able to have a say at the start. So what renders are amazing at doing is, um, this is one here, people aren't going to understand it that easily, especially someone like me. However, when we look at something like this, you really get to sell the dream, and if maybe they're not obsessed with the dream, they can go in and make some changes. If they've got the garage there, maybe they don't like that colour, maybe they want it different, it saves everyone time and saves everyone money, and you really get to wow someone with, this could be my house. Um, we do a lot of different things for a lot of different people. So in the new construction space, we do a lot of visualizations. But in the real estate space, what we do is we edit a lot of people's images for them as well. A lot of the times we see that maybe you've done your construction um, and you've finished, you've left, but the landscaping isn't done or the painting isn't done and your role is done. What we're here to say is that there is no, you have a way of taking photos, editing them and making them look like they've completely finished without having to come back to the property and do it as you can. So we have a suite of different photo edits, whether it's image enhancement, data dusk, item removal, virtual staging, that allows you to have these professionally edited marketing images, whether they're for your website, whether they're for your social media, and it works in conjunction to help you get those reviews and really build that portfolio of your online presence. Um, we also have an app that just came out that kind of does all of this and more. So if anyone has any questions, um, I am here for the next few days.
pop by the booth and have a chat. Um, but I'm going to hand back to these experts right here. Um, and yeah, thank you for having me. Enjoy lunch. Thank you. That was awesome. A lot of great information. OK, so to, back to today's panel. I'm going to see if this is working. OK, so I'd love to introduce everybody on stage here with me. So here to my left, we've got Anya Chrysanthemum. She is the Chief Communications Officer at Anugo, and she is an accomplished communication strategist and leader. If you don't know her, really, I think everybody's got to know you. In her role, she oversees all aspects of corporate communications, public relations, executive visibility, and thought leadership initiatives. Anya has earned accolades such as NAHB's One to Watch and Pro Builders 40 Under 40. Additionally, she hosts a podcast, A New Go of New Home Sales, where she explores the latest trends in sales and marketing technologies tailored for the home building sector. Under her guidance, A New Go has gained recognition as a trailblazer in interactive digital design tools and data analytics in new home sales and marketing, making a significant stride in the industry's evolution. Thanks for being here, Anya. Thanks for having me. All right, and next to her is Dr. Mike Bills. He has served as president of Atlas RTX since October 2020. Atlas RTX supports home buying customer journeys with AI-powered digital marketing, sales, and service digital assistance. Before joining Atlas, Mike was the co-founder of Connex Ed, the leader in, in virtual student services and higher education. Mike has also led a series of acquisitions of three underperforming businesses across a broad set of industries, and Mike is a graduate of Westminster University in Salt Lake City and has served on the Westminster Board of Trustees. He currently serves as chair of the Diversity, Equity, and Inclusion Committee and vice chair of the Governance Committee. Well accomplished. Thank you for being here, my friend. Also, we have, get back to my right page, Miss Melissa Mormon. She is an accomplished executive whose career has spanned multiple industries, from executive roles in Fortune 500 companies to foundational roles in startups. Melissa has held a broad set of executive responsibilities from general management to launching new divisions to direct global business development, leading marketing, sales, account management, whew, and launching new products. Girl, you've done it all. The one constant in her success has been her unwavering advocacy of customer experience. Melissa, Melissa was a member of the founding executive team with BDX, and she served as the chief experience officer where she managed the entire life cycle of customer experience. Melissa has also led the launch of several BDX products, including Envision, the industry's online options program. She is a sought-after sought speaker, consultant, and active member on several boards. Thank you for being here. And then finally, we have our friend Beth Bird. She is the director of sales and marketing for Beacon Homes. Beth oversees the sales and marketing and selection selections teams in Oklahoma City and Tulsa, with 25 years of experience in a wide variety of positions in the design and construction industry in California and Oklahoma. She brings frontline experience to each team she manages, and in her 10 years with Beacon, the company has quadrupled its sales volume. Being part of such exponential growth has allowed her to implement new processes, systems, and training, working hand-in-hand -hand with some of the best minds in the industry. She is our builder on the panel, so very excited to have your insights as well. Okay, so now that we've got all that fun housekeeping behind and you know who's on this panel, let's go ahead and get started. So today, again, we're talking about building the funnel and how do we um, engage people throughout the funny funnel. We'll be discussing how today's marketing funnel is moving buyers through new experiences. And, con and if conversation is king, how are they moving in and out of what appears to be a changing funnel as they're looking for on-demand and engagement points? So with that, I'll go through just a couple session highlights. Uh, so we're going to review how and why the marketing funnels are changing. You know, we kind of know this classic cone, but how is that changing? And we have all got some different point of views here. We're going to discuss where builders are spending the most time and dollars to drive new leads through conversion. We're also going to look at the new uh, self-service model, what uh, how buyers want and how they want to be responded to versus bailing during some of those uh, stopping points in the, in the conversations. We're also going to review how a marketing funnel builds trust and we're gonna explore how builders can ramp up and capitalize on an e-commerce environment. Because when we say buy online, there, there's a lot of different meanings to that, but we're all showing up in a buy and an e-commerce experience. So how can we make that bet a better experience is what we're gonna talk about today. <clears throat> and we're gonna go ahead and start with you, Melissa. Okay. I'll go ahead and pass it to you. She's got some amazing slides, really excited for this. Okay, so first we're gonna go back in memory, and some of you weren't even born at this time, but some of you will remember 
the good old days of marketing and sales. And despite the fact that it was like martinis at lunch and cigarettes, which later gave them all cancer, it was kind of a simpler time, right? And it was kind of fun and it was kind of sexy. But in those times, we felt like we controlled the dialogue, right? Someone had to come see us in order to buy a home. There was no online, there was no digital. They had to show up and they had to go through our entire pitch, which sometimes was really laborious and awful, but they had to go through that. Kind of like used to be buying a car, right? They had to come and show up and we felt like we controlled that story. We could tell our brand, we could tell our story, and we could show our products the way that we wanted to. Um, and then we had the birth of the internet, and we thought we were super fancy, uh, because we basically took all of our brochure rare and we put it online. So instead of the paper brochure you had to come in and get, you could see it online, but the calls to action were still come see me, visit me, right? So it was kind of brochure wear. And then we did get a little crazy with like full page lead forms, which I don't think anybody in the, ever the history of man filled out. But, and that's not dissing KB. They were very advanced. We were all doing kind of this same thing kind of in the you know year 2000-ish. But life shifted and what's really happened, and I love this very simple model from Google, it's called Zero Moment of Truth. So what I just described is kind of up there on the top. We would do some marketing, a billboard, a really expensive newspaper ad, a radio ad, signage, traditional kind of marketing, and then they would show up at our retail store, right, our sales center, model homes. They would you know, hopefully buy from us, and then they would have an experience, and it was really great or bad or in between, and they would tell their circle. They would tell a few people how that experience was, and that was kind of the end of that. What's happening to us today is a completely different process, right? So we still do marketing, now we've added all kinds of other sophisticated marketing, PPC and SEO and online ads and all these other things, and we still do traditional, and we do that, but the next step is very different. Now what happens as a prospect, I actually go out and do my own research on you. Right, because I'm not wedded to having to just hear what you say about you. I go do research and I read every review out there. And then what happens is I either kind of wade through that and go, okay, I still will talk to them, or it's so bad I just drop out. Now you never see these people. You don't even know that they existed or that they checked you out, right? You didn't even get the chance to tell your story. Then if I come see you and I buy and I go through that process, then I have an experience which is great or bad and then I tell the world about it. The difference is it's not just my small circle. Those reviews get posted everywhere online and thousands and thousands of people can find them and see them. That completely changes the experience. Guess what? We're no longer in control of our brand experience and what people think. They're doing it for us. So helpful. Um, you know, now we're kind of getting even fancier, right? We're all doing customer journey mapping, right? Like we all know what that is and we're all doing it, which is where you put yourself in the lens of your customer and look at your processes, not from our internal siloed organization, but how does the customer experience in every touch point and what's positive and great and what are potholes and all of that good stuff. So if you're doing that, that's awesome and you need to keep doing that. And if you're not doing it, you need to look that up and we, we can help you do that. Um, but we also fall into a trap here because what we think is that we go through this process and it's very linear and every customer is going to come in at the beginning and they're going to nicely, neatly go through to the end, right? Well, this is so awesome. It really looks more like this, right? Customers are coming in and out and they're going online and then they're coming to see you and they may start way over here at the end of the process and then they'll come back in over here and it may be a year later. Like it's just completely still not within our control. Um, so it's gotten really complicated. And what we refer to it as is the omni-channel world, right? We have all these different advertising mechanisms that we can tap into, which is great but confusing and overwhelming at times. And we have these customers and prospects that are coming in and out digitally, physically, all over the place and, and all of that. So it's gotten really complicated. So this is my one moment to have great empathy for all the marketing and salespeople in the room um, because it's really challenging. And we're out with the cigarettes and martinis, which, you know, okay, the martinis are kind of nice. Um, and now we're in with data, right? This is the new face of marketing, right? It's about 
managing with data, understanding data, siphoning through the data, triangulating the data, and actually experimenting and trying to, to manage through this customer experience. So the concept of a funnel, and we had a really good conversation mm -hmm. as a panel about nice, tidy funnel? I'm not <laughs> sure that's really you know, what we experience. So I'm gonna hit really quickly five key areas of focus. There's more like 500, but we only have you know 45 minutes or so. And so I'm gonna hit five, and then the panelists are gonna do some reinforcement and have their own ideas as well. But I think the goal of it, sometimes we forget the goal. Now, I have been married for a very long time, and very happily married, most, mostly happily married, and he's a great guy. Um, some of you know him. And I have been told on dating sites that if you like what you see, you swipe right. I've just been told that. Um, you know, friends tell me that. Um, supposedly, you swipe right. That's what we're trying to do with our digital experience. We want them to experience us in a positive way, enough that they're ready to go to that next step. It's like dating, right? But they're in control, so we have to make sure what they're checking out online and digitally actually is what we want them to see. Um, so I'm gonna just quickly blast through these five key areas of focus um, before I turn it over to everyone else. And I do have a little spoiler alert. So because we have this digital, physical retail world, and some of you may be going completely digital and you have no physical retail spaces. Maybe you're getting rid of your model homes and you're doing all virtual reality. Maybe you're getting rid of your design centers and I'm not saying you should, but you know, we're all in different strategies of how we wanna use digital and physical. But if you have a physical experience, model homes, sales center, digital or design centers, you have to be visit worthy, right? Because during the pandemic, 63% of people made an offer without seeing the property. So I'll just say that again, 63%. And now you're gonna go, well, COVID's gone. Well, not exactly, but COVID's kind of over, the pandemic's over. Before that, it was 41%. And we all know some of those pandemic behaviors have stuck with us because people realize they don't have to do it that way, right? So you have to be visit worthy. If you want them to come see you and you went to all the time, trouble, money to have model homes and sales centers and design centers, you have to give them something unique to show up. And we're gonna talk about that as well. So the first one is building trust. So remember ZMOT, zero moment of truth. Online reviews are really, really, really critical. It's critical for them to ever, ever want to even talk to you. Um, but just for giggles, not now, because then you'll miss the rest of the presentation. If you go ch check out your brand um, reputation online right now, you're gonna get angry and you're call back in the office and you'll miss everything else that we have to say. So later, when you have a break, and maybe if you're doing some shots, would be helpful, just <laughs> Google just your back. brand, you know, Tom Jones Homes, and make sure you do it incognito because Google knows who you are and they will adjust the results based on your search history and you wanna look like you know, a prospect. Um, this is a, an amazing builder. I hid their name to protect them. Um, but this is not unlike what I see with most builders when I sit with, down with them. If they are not managing their reputation, and I've known them for 20 years, they do amazing product, they have super happy customers, really great, but the number one um, result that comes up is pissconsumer.com. Now that's a really nice place to show up, don't you think? And they got a one and a half star. The next one was Yelp, a you know, four reviews, two stars, right? Really bad. The next one's more Yelp, one star, five reviews, that's the average. And there's this lovely video of a child who supposedly was harmed by this home builder because of mold in their home. I mean, it's just gun wrenching, and I hope that's not true. Might be, you know. Um, but that's what I would see before I might consider going to see this builder. I'm, I'm not gonna go see this builder, right? Now, thankfully, some people do wade through, and they have taken action since then. They're gonna, they took some of our advice, so they're all cleaned up, and they have a much better experience now. But it's a real thing, and this is what people are looking at. And especially millennials and Gen Zs, they will rely on reviews before they listen to friends and family. And I think Tim mentioned that yesterday in his talk. And it's true, and I get why they wouldn't talk and listen to their parents, I get, I, like, get that. But other people in their circle they won't listen to, they think reviews are real and that's the truth. Um, so you really have to think about that. But there are things that you can do. Here's the good news, you cannot get rid of all that stuff that's out there. It's in there, the, the internet has the memory of an elephant, so it is out there forever. But what you can do is flood it with real reviews. 
really positive reviews, actual reviews from actual home buyers. Because what happens? With reviews, you get just the people who are really angry who go on and fill a review. If they're super happy, they don't. Or you get someone who's just angry in the moment they're really upset about this crack, you fix it, they don't go back and change the review. It's just out there. Or it's a former disgruntled employee that's really trying to hurt you, or it's a competitor, right? So there's no way to validate those reviews, but other people read them and think they're real. But you can work Google reviews, you can work BDX Trust Builder, Alliant, Avid Rating, so many things that you can do to push that down and have a realistic view. And nobody has a five star. Actually, people think that's just a lie if they see you have a five star review. What they wanna see is, did you respond, right? Did you respond to that? Did you have their back? Were you there for them? So it's really, really critical, <coughs> but don't look until after um, we get through this. Um, the next piece, and Anya's gonna really probably drive this home, if I can go online and design a $100 pair of shoes down to like the shoelaces and those little circles you know, on your shoes, surely the most expensive purchase I'm ever gonna make, you're gonna give me something to design and personalize and, and be selfish. Even if you don't care about giving them what they want, it will give you what you want because they're gonna wanna save their favorites, create an account, and you now know who they are and you can work with them, right? Let them dream, let them go deeper in the process. The other thing that we're starting to see, and this is really exciting, and when I do this, people are like, well, we're never gonna like close online and you know do all that online. It, Maybe not, maybe, maybe you will, I'm, I'm not clairvoyant. What it is about is letting people go further in the process if they choose to. Let them go as far as they want on their own, as far as they want digitally. Um, if they wanna go all the way and you can do it, great. And what you'll see is, you know, to mention this yesterday, Taylor Morrison, you can reserve a home online. <laughs> TriPoint lets you go through the entire process. Virtual reality homes, design it put it in your options, they have the pricing, they come out with a personalized brochure for the Jones family that is everything. That's a great lead, like that would be really awesome. I think we could close that, right? So the key isn't you have to go all the way, but let them go as far as they want to go. And then um, calls to action, which are really kind of the holy grail. So when you think about the goal, it's swiping right, it's getting them to want to go to the next step with you and connect with you, and you wanna know who they are. So there's just a few quick tips here. One, earning their contact information, their email address, which is basically like your social security number, right? We don't give that out easily. There has to be a fair and equal exchange. There has to be something in it for me to be able to, why would I give you my email address? So you can spam me? Uh, no, there has to be something that I want. Um, enable all calls to action. Email, phone, text, social media, chat, uh, carrier pigeons, uh, you know, whatever, however they want to communicate, you need to be able to accommodate that and respond to them. And enable on their time, and I don't know if Mike's gonna cover this, but I was, fascinated by data a couple of years ago when they showed us when people were engaging on the website and with chatbots. It's like one o'clock in the morning, it's two o'clock in the morning, it's crazy. But you think about it, that's when they have the time and that's when they dream and some people are night owls and that's what they do. And if you don't have any way for them to get answers or to engage with you, it can be really frustrating and they'll go to someone who does, right? And you don't have to have all the answers, but you start to create that connection. And sprinkle in the different calls to action at natural points. Having a contact tab is just fine, but they shouldn't have to go figure out how and when to contact you. Put them in at natural points. You just designed your home. Would you like to save that and create an account? That's natural. That doesn't feel invasive, um, but it's a really great time to do it. Offer softer calls to action. So they don't have to be ready to buy and have a salesperson pounce on them, offer a newsletter, sign up for the newsletter, sign up for a design guide, how to buy guide, you know, recipe book, whatever. You then get their information, you can start to drip market them and do drip campaigns, but it's not invasive and it's not, I'll have a salesperson call you, right? They're not ready for that, but you now have that connection you can nurture. Autoresponders are not a response. Kind of nice to do, so I know my email went through, but that's really all it is. Don't pretend like that's the total response or craft something. I think you should be kind of cute going, well, our email systems are now connected. A human will contact you, right? You know, it's like, I got your email and I'll do it. And respond, I mean, actually respond. In my 22 years, over half of leads were never worked. 
over half. And everybody goes, well, not me. I'm like, well, I secret shopped you. You didn't, you didn't respond, right? So if you haven't secret shopped yourself or had someone do that, you should do that because it's a shame. So why are you marketing if you're actually not going to work the connections and do anything with them? And respond early. There's all kinds of stats out there. The first one to respond gets the business. And it, it sends a message. It means you care, you're gonna be responsive. That means you'll be responsive through this entire process. You don't care enough to call me back on a half a million dollar purchase or $400,000 purchase. You know, I really don't wanna work with you. Respond personally, not a canned response. Great to have templates, right? That really helps your team, you know, so they don't have to rethink every email, but they need to customize those. And if there was a question to ask, answer the question, right? How many times, and when I do it, I'll go, well, what are the HO fees? And I get this beautiful email back, but no answer to my question. So it's a personal business. And stop whining about how many contacts it takes to reach them. It just is, <laughs> right? It may take you 10, it may take you 20. There's you're not in a perfect sale. number. No, and you're in sales, so buck up, buttercup. This is just yeah. the way it is, and if you wanna sell, that's what you're gonna have to do. Um, and then lastly, I'll just touch really quickly on physical retail experiences. We said, be visit worthy, give them something. This is just an example of augmented reality, where if I show up and I hold up the iPad and I can see the lot, I can drag a home on it, it fixes the plan, and then I can walk through that house and she can go in and she can see out the windows. That's worth showing up for, that's really cool. I can't do that online, but it's also digital, right? Um, it needs to be a seamless process across digital and retail, so don't do something online and be super sexy there, and then I show up and it's like the land that time forgot. Like, okay, this is like not hanging together. Offer self-service and assistance, right? So be there to assist them, but let them self-serve. Have kiosks, have things they can interact with, and again, it should mirror what you have online and then continue digital into that retail space so that it is a consistent brand experience. So I'm gonna wrap up um, and pass it, pass it along, but just remember these five things, and again, you want them to swipe right. Thanks. Thank you. All right. Well, we're gonna... <laughs> it was good, that was good. I mean, definitely. Like, it was, we, I knew she had so much information. I was like, we're just gonna let you go. <laughs> I tried to watch but now that. we're gonna get into some other tactical. I think that was a, a great overview of kind of the, the what's to, to be thinking about. But so Mike's gonna talk about Atlas and talk through their products. And I can say as I was a, a user of their products, this is a key component to be thinking about whether it's Atlas products or something else. When you're driving people into the funnel, What's that engagement point? And how do we, as a user, I engage my OSC teams, my sales teams, and my prospects and converted way more leads than I thought about how AI and how chat functionality was gonna change the business and change all of the, the tools and tie more of the tools. So I think, really excited to hear about your, your, your really a big touch point in this funnel conversation. Thank you. So let's, oh, all right. Well, the first slide's working, so I'm pretty, I'm, uh, I'm excited about that. <laughs> Um, so, um, well, thanks for that uh, sort of endorsement. I appreciate it. I had it. to, but um, sorry. <laughs> and this is a, Melissa, you're a tough act to follow. Nice slides. I'm, those were impressive. <laughs> so, um, a little bit about us. So, um, so we, so AI certainly has received so much attention, really, for about the last 12 months. Um, it, it's probably the least precise term that is in everybody's vocabulary these days. It means something different to, uh, to many people. Um, we have been in conversational AI since uh, 2016 when Atlas was founded uh, by my dear friend, Sam Salem, um, who did all of his graduate work uh, in, as a computer scientist in uh, natural language processing and machine learning. So, um, so our roots in AI go really back to some of the foundations of it. Uh, and I can give a whole session on, on what's AI, what's not, but that would be a, a, a different time. But anyway, we, um, so we support complex uh, purchasing journeys, right? And there's, there's no purchasing journey that's more dear, that's more expensive, uh, that's more high stakes than buying a home. And so I'm just going to point to the iconography on this, uh, along this journey from awareness to consideration, purchase, delivery, and advocacy. Um, you see that we've got some robots and we've got some people, and that might seem like it's random, but uh, that iconography is actually deliberate. 
Uh, and the reason being is because uh, we at Atlas, we say this over and over and have from, the, from our inception, is that AI and humans are better together. It's better for the, for the home builder and it's better for the home buyer. Uh, and I'll walk through some of these things and I think they'll end up being somewhat self-evident. But when we start out an awareness, that awareness is taking place on your website by and large. And when somebody visits your website, and we have the data to support this, for the most part, when they're that high in the funnel, they don't want to talk to a human being. Um, because salespeople can be pushy, obnoxious, et cetera. Uh, and if you just think about a, a, what would be an analog experience of going into a department store, when the salesperson runs, uh, rushes up to you and says, can I help you? You're like, no, 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 I'm just browsing. Uh, and because you want, so want self-service at that point. Once you actually identify something that you want, at that point, you want the human to help you. And that's a similar experience on your website. So you'll have, uh, and I am not here to, to um, diminish live chat in any way, but the fact is that you'll have much higher engagement rate when people know that they're talking to one of these software robots than engaging with a human. Because humans can, um, one thing is, oftentimes they're just not there. They're not responsive within the 10 seconds that you have to respond to people. In fact, my favorite thing to do is when I do a demo with a prospect and they have live chat on their website, is to fire up the live chat at the beginning <laughs> of the demo and have it just be there for the half an hour that I'm gonna do the demo without oh. anybody ever engaging with me. Oh, that's harsh. <laughs> and it happens all the time. It's why I'm, and I know that that's sort of a risky thing to do when I'm doing a demo, <laughs> but it pays off uh, almost every time. And so anyway, I'll move on here. So one of the things, so the RTX in our name, it stands for real-time experience. and we think that there's some important pillars of this real-time experience, the first of which is um, digital first. So the overwhelming majority of home builders are going to start their search on the internet um, and they're gonna buy a, a home that they find on an online source. And so you think about the consumer experiences that you have right now. Um, and for those of you as, as old as I am, um, we used to have this notion of white glove service, which meant it was going to be like a concierge type where a human was going to help us with everything. That's really been turned on its head over the, the last generation because the, the consumer experiences that have the, the highest ratings are experiences like Tesla, where you don't talk to a person. You do the entire purchase of that vehicle and the configuration of it. You do it yourself. You do it online. You do it on your own time. Um, I know um, I'm not cool enough to, in tech you're supposed to have a Tesla and I, I don't want to be a cliche. Um, so I bought my last car on Carvana, same thing. I didn't have to talk, the only time I dealt with a person is when they dropped the, the car off at my house. Um, and so these digital first self-service experiences, those are the things that we want now. And home building can be, and I've been in some, as Jennifer mentioned, I was in a, Melissa and I were talking before about the home building industry being somewhat slow to adopt some of these techniques and technologies. I was in higher education before, so <laughs> home building seems like it moves at lightning speed comparatively. Uh, but there still are a lot of notions that, well, the home buying experience is it's special, so we should continue with this white glove type of service. And I would contend that you're, that there, I'm certain that there are buyers that still appreciate that, but if that's all you're set up for, you're missing the rest of the market that wants experiences like what they can do with Tesla uh, and all the other things that you do that are self-serve, uh, such as like Amazon, et cetera. So, um, and Melissa brought up some of the data about uh, when people visit your websites uh, and this is a cross, so we, do, we have over a million conversations happening um, with our chatbots on home builder websites a month. Mm -hmm. uh, and so we see the traffic pattern across the entire industry, and over 60% of website traffic comes after hours and on weekends. And so if all you're going to do is ha try to staff this with humans in this anachronistic mm -hmm. idea that, that we have to have this purely human touch, you literally forsake two-thirds of the audience that comes to your website. 
And, and again, I would contend that they would prefer to begin this experience with these software robots. But, but also, I mentioned that AI and humans are better together. And so we're not trying to supplant or replace humans. What we're trying to do is empower humans to do the things that they're best at by empowering these software robots to do the things that they're better at. And these software robots are awesome at, at uh, being available 24 seven, answering repetitive questions in a myriad of ways that they're asked. That's the, big, that's the hard thing we have to do is we have to identify the intent of a user and users misspell things, they use terrible grammar, they use colloquialisms that uh, are different from region to region. And, and our software robots are really good at understanding that, speaking a hundred languages. They never get upset, they never get frustrated, they always give the right answer. Um, and which is awesome because that frees up our human teams to do the things that they're really good at. And humans are great at empathizing, reading the room and understanding where somebody is. Um, they're good at explaining things. And most importantly, uh, since we're, we're in sales and marketing here, um, they're really good at persuading. And these are things that software robots are terrible at. So by thinking of these as digital workers that are, and that's how I, I, I evangelize that we should think of them as digital workers. They're members of your team um, and they do jobs that they do well, empowering your human teams to do the things that they do really well. And that together <coughs> elevates the experience, again, for the home builder and for the home buyer. I think in some, we're not saying- There's some real results uh, from real help and, I'm, uh, and I know I need to be careful not to just be pitching my products, but I want to point to one of the, uh, and you guys are all excellent readers and so in the interest of time, I'll just point to one of these specific ones. Uh, but I think uh, this data point uh, when it comes to Smith Douglas Homes is one of the best pieces of evidence that home buyers want a self-service digital experience. So when we engage with Smith Douglas, um, they were generous enough with us to share a bunch of information about what was happening after we gave them leads. And to our total surprise and theirs, um, this significant percentage of the, of the buyers that came through an Atlas generated lead on their website, they did the purchase themselves without the help of a realtor. And so I, and again, I'm a PhD social scientist, so I'm never gonna confuse correlation and causation. We didn't make that happen. Um, what we did is we, um, we provided a way that a buyer who is confident and capable to serve themselves all the way through will. Um, and because we created that, that conduit for that self-serve buyer, um, it saved Smith Douglas a hell of a lot of money. And so, uh, so like I said, I, we are not in the business of trying to replace people, um, but again, there are so many buyers that want that, that digital first experience. And again, I, I contend that the, the, the data that we have from Smith Douglas <coughs> is such a proof point of, of that fact. <coughs> Excuse me. Oh, thank you. All right. Well, it's actually a perfect transition it over is. to me because Smith Douglas is a new ghost client and we provide <laughs> all of the interactive content on our website. So as you're bringing the lead, the reason why they're able to complete that journey online is because they have this interactive content. So um, today I would like to talk about the evolution of, um, of the search itself. So of course, uh, artificial intelligence has changed the way home buyers are searching for properties. Um, and um, I would like to talk about how we can make our content AI friendly so that you're prepared for that next stage. So we talked about the evolution of the sales funnel. So instead of your typical sales funnel where you're funneling the customer down the funnel, nobody wants to be funneled. Instead, <laughs> the customer is um, go, uh, more products are brought to the customer. So we see it more as a circle where there's many points of entry and exit and as uh, customers coming in, they're engaging with your interactive content. That in turn generates data for AI, so you can optimize your content and improve that, and again, attract customers better. So it's more of a circular uh, combination. Now, I personally am a big fan of artificial intelligence, yes. so I actually find myself more and more <laughs> not using Google and using more AI um, um, search engines, such as ChatGPT, Bard, uh, Claude, I mean, there's a variety of different 
search engines out there. So when I'm looking for important questions in life, such as did Taylor Swift put t Travis Kelsey on the map, I go to one of those search engines. And what's unique about that, what you'll notice, is that instead of giving me a bunch of links where I can go and research the answer to this question, it provides me with an answer. And I'm a busy girl, so I don't have time to click on all those things. This is perfect, right? I just want to get to the answer, get to the bottom line. And we see that people are starting to search for new construction, very similar way. Um, AI al allows you to carry out conversations just like you would with your real estate agents. Instead of saying 3BR, half acre, Wayne PA, new construction, right? Google limits you to three keywords, describe your dream home, which is an impossible task. Mm -hmm. AI instead allows us to carry on conversations just like I would with my real estate agent. I can say, hey, I have a large family. I'm looking for new construction in Wayne, Pennsylvania. I really want it to be at least four bedrooms, three and a half bathrooms. I have dogs, so I'm looking for a larger um, plant, right? I want to be on a half acre and please make it under $3 million. So again, it will return results and it'll suggest which communities I should check out, right? Uh, it comes up with, hey, Toll Brothers has a community near you, check it out. Instead of giving me those links, it will still reference the links at the bottom, but instead it will give me results, so cuts back on time, cut back some clutter, and what's really cool about this is that over time it will return results based on my preferences because it's learning about who I am. So funny story, um, you know, I, uh, I was dreaming about rats for whatever reason. I had this recurring <laughs> dream and it was a rat in my dream. So I was like, okay, what does this mean? So I went on and I said, Chad GPT, like, what does this mean when I'm dreaming about rats? And it said, it gave me an answer, but first it said, hey, as a, as a chief brand officer in home uh, building, you probably shouldn't discuss this topic with your, <laughs> with your followers. I was like, thank you so much for keeping me in my lane. But the bottom is, it's looking out for me, right? It's, it knows who I am, it knows what kind of topics I typically discuss, and it said, hey, it's probably not appropriate to discuss this with your audience. So it's not only gonna return searches that are appropriate to me because it knows me, but it's also going to return searches that are trending out there because it looks at all of internet and it's scouring that internet for me and narrowing that results for me. So it, it reduces the overwhelm factor. It gets me to the point where, hey, okay, there's the three communities you can start with. Another unique feature about AI-enabled chat is that it is voice and image capable. So I can just talk to it. Uh, right, uh, and image is really important because home building, we are visual, right? All of our marketing materials, it's all visual. So now, ChatGPT is able to actually view floor plans. So when I ask it, hey, which floor plan would be the best for my large family, it's able to compare floor plans and tell me, oh, hey, um, that one is gonna be the best option for you. So this is really, really important as you're thinking about the kind of content you're developing for, for search. Thanks, if I can interject real quick. I think that's, these are two great takeaways. As was like Melissa just said, don't do it now, but to go in and play with some of the ChatGBT features and just test how your brand is showing up and test, play with like Alexa, play with all of the different formats out there because people are using it and you're gonna be really surprised. So it was a good takeaway, to something you can start doing when you get back to the office. Mm -hmm. So when, you, when it comes to um, creating AI-friendly content, <clears throat> think about clarity of content, quality of content, um, user intent, right? What type of things are people asking for? And you wanna answer that in full, full sentences in your content because it's no longer keywords and standardization. So when it comes to floor plans, think about how they're standardized with how you're representing walls, uh, windows, uh, all the different spaces so that AI is able to read that information very easily so that it can bring it to search results. User experience is also extremely important for AI because it prioritizes how fast is your website, is it mobile friendly, is user engaged on your website. And speaking of user engagement, we know that interactive content is very important for user engagement. For some reason, the videos are not playing, but okay, it's supposed to show the interactive content on there. So um, interactive content is great for engaging users because they spend more time on your website engaging with your content. 
But the best part about interactive content is that every single click generates data. That data is very valuable because data is what feeds AI in turn. So we can see not only individual customer journey based from that data, if you have interactive content like Smith Douglas on their website, we can see that this customer came in, they visited, uh, they had two sessions averaging 46 minutes per session, which is incredible. Uh, we can see that they have an uh, engagement score of 62, which is anything over 60% means they're very engaged. They're not a hot lead yet because they haven't re uh, reached out to the builder to <coughs> contact them. But we can see all the details, how many communities they viewed, how many floor plans, how many floor plans they favored. And again, it's probably not going to play here. Um, Sorry. Yeah, it's all good. So we can see down to okay, which home did they design, and um, all the colors, all the options. So it's not only great for your salespeople, because now when they follow up with that lead, it's not, hey, are you still interested? It's actually having a conversation about their preferences. Obviously, you don't want to be creepy about it and say, I can see every single thing that your customer, you're doing on there. But hey, uh, have you looked at our gourmet kitchens, right? Because you know that they really like the gourmet kitchen option. Um, you can also aggregate all of that data. So when you aggregate that data, like Tim Costello talked about yesterday, you can be on top of those trends. Hey, everybody's looking at smaller footprints. You can get ahead of that and offer sm smaller footprints to your customers. Just like Mike talked about visitor times, so you can see I pulled that from Lombardo Homes website. The darker, that means the heavier traffic. So you can see the normal business hours are very light and it, all the activity happens at, at midnight, 10 o'clock at night on the weekends. So when you're digitizing your sales process, both Melissa and Mike talked about buy now and transacting online. One of the biggest benefits of keeping customer as long as possible on your website and instead of taking them offline is because all of that data is recorded through transaction. You're not just limiting it to the marketing stage, you are getting full picture of what are they doing, what do they look at, and where did they end up. Because when you have that data, then you can utilize things like personalization marketing. So when somebody comes into your website, if they're coming in from California, you're gonna show them certain pictures versus if they're downsizer or first time buyer, how, what kind of messaging, what kind of images you're gonna show them can be personalized based on that data. Predictive marketing like Amazon, hey, if you looked at this floor plan, chances are you're really gonna like this. It's gonna help you with product development and uh, supply chain optimization, just like airline seats. Chances are you didn't pay the same price as person sitting next to you, so if somebody's looking at home site 13 and everybody's looking at that home site, raise the price automatically. If nobody's looking at home site eight, hey, maybe that's the sale. So in conclusion, and as you're thinking about making your content AI friendly, concentrate on interactive content. Interactive content is gold because it generates all that data and AI needs data. Think about offering personalized experiences that are dynamically changing based on that customer's preferences, their again, location, their interest, et cetera. And as much as possible, you want to create an omni-channel experience and break down any data silos. So whether it's marketing department, sales department, customer service, you want to unify that data as much as possible so that AI can really see the entire customer journey and they can optimize that in more of a holistic way. So with that, I'm going to hand it over to Beth to bring us home. Thank you, Anya. So whoops, as we talked about this, we had great conversation about the funnel and we said, is there still a funnel? And I think in some ways we can argue that there is still a funnel out there, but really we talked about the circular pattern and I thought about the roundabout. Now, depending on where you <laughs> live in the country, show of hands, who has to drive through a roundabout very often? Okay, good. It's kind of crazy. Some of them are crazy, right? Others are pretty easy to get through. Well. I think some of our buyer's journeys are like a roundabout. And the orange car here, I think about my brother. And yes, the cars are going the wrong way. They're on the left side of the road because there's a lot more roundabouts in Europe and the good pictures I could find were all from Europe. So anyway, the orange car reminds me of my brother. His new hobby is looking on Zillow for homes. 
they, he has this extensive list of saved homes that fit his criteria. Now, he's not planning to move for three to five years, but it's so fun to think and plan and dream for the future. So this orange car is just kind of touching the edge of the marketing for this builder and moving on out, and hopefully he'll come back around, right? The blue car, they know where they want to go. These are your quick buyers. They're moving through really fast. And then there's the green car. The green car is going to take a little bit more time to go through your process. And so the question is, as a home builder, how do you decide with all of these amazing products and tools out there, how do you decide which one? I know when I enter the sales funnel or the roundabout for all these products, sometimes I feel like it's like this. <laughs> like there are too many options. I don't know which way to go. And I, I think our buyers sometimes feel like this too, mm -hmm. right? So the, the key for us is that customer journey mapping that Melissa talked about. How do we put ourselves in our buyer's shoes and understand what's most important to them? And I'll tell you, less is more. So as we, we build about 100 homes a year, so we don't have a huge budget, and we implemented most of this technology when we were around 40 homes a year. And the way that we've done that is we really figured out how do we do more with less. So for example, um, we, we, as we mapped out our customer journey, we determined that customers were most interested in visualization options in the shopping phase. They weren't so concerned with the SKU level design choices at that point. They, they wanted to kind of understand, am I going to get the look of the house I want before I commit? So we opted to keep visualization in Anugo with our interactive floor plans, our site maps, our exterior options. And, and we said, OK, well, what else can we do with Anugo? We determined I, I use it for my pre-construction planning, my starts. I go in there and I look at what other houses are there, what's on what lot, what would make sense to a buyer on this street. I've used it for presentations to developers who are looking to add commercial and multifamily to help them see what's the vision for the community that we're creating here so that it will be consistent and cohesive. So I've tried to find ways to do more with less. Um, we, we had a, an online design center for a couple of years. So instead of spending the money for a brick and mortar location, we have a local vendor that we can go and put some stuff in a cabinet and bring it out and meet with the customer there. But we invested in the online design center and we are in the process of switching from the one we used for a couple of years to ECI's InSearch because we figured out our office was already on Mark Systems in the background. And we were creating double work and uh, a lot of uh, friction in our, the back end of our process by having those things separated. And so we're, we're integrating those two and we're saying, okay, how do we, we've already invested in Mark Systems as our ERP, how do we do more with that? We do that by bringing our online design center in. Um, and then it, for us, it tied into Lasso as well. Are we keeping our buyers in the funnel? Well, that's an ECI ecosystem, and no, I don't work for them. They're not paying me to say <laughs> so I just, I just been their customer because we found less is more, having fewer ecosystems to work in, mm. simplified things for us as a builder sure. that had a limited mm. budget and limited time. So I would just say, think about your customer journey, think about your team, and, and it's important to talk to the other members of your team. We, we talked to our pre-construction department when we were trying to decide what to do about our design center and figured out how does this impact their lives, not just the sales and marketing. It's easy for sales and marketing to kind of bulldoze through the company. And it's really important to be considering what everyone else um, is dealing with. So I'm the mom to five boys from 11 to 20 stepmom to a couple of them and this is their life a lot of the time and you might think oh i'm not a gamer but i bet you are how many of you play wordle every day with me or <laughs> candy crush or solitaire right we play games and in the sales world we talk about buying temperature right the buyer's with us their buying temperature is high and the further the, the longer they're away from us the more that buying temperature drops well, I would argue that having these tools for them to go home and play video games with your floor plans, with your exteriors, with your sites, that's keeping that buying temperature high so that they're engaged with your company. And instead of spending the time looking for other homes on Zillow, they're dreaming about what their future looks like in your home. So I hope that's helpful little sneak peek into how we have approached so many different options in technology. Awesome, awesome. love it. Well, thank you, everybody. We are at time, but I would just love to lead with one, one idea, hearing about AI, hearing about all of these different things that we need to watch.
create an AI task force uh, in your companies. Watch it, test it, because you know it's going to change literally, Anya, like week to week. Um, you need a task force doing this. It could be marketing, it could be different people from different departments, but definitely it's nothing that's going away. It's going to be here to help us if we utilize it the right way. Thank you so much, everybody, for joining us, and you'll now go outside and meet with your...